Well, I'm so excited that you all are here. Um, Carolyn, you joined us in for a couple of sessions earlier today and really excited to have the opportunity to have you as the feature author. Um, just to give you all some um, background, just in terms of why we're doing what we're doing today. So today is August 9th. And August 9th is celebrated around the world as National Book Lovers Day. And I have to keep saying this because someone said to me, did you make this up? And I said, no, seriously, it really is National Book Lovers Day. If you do a Google search, you will find that it says it's an unofficial holiday in the United States that celebrates the love of books. And so this year, it falls, it happens to fall on a Sunday. And so I said to myself, wow, what better way to raise awareness about Christian authors and the books that they write? And also about the one book that is so important to all of us. And no matter if we are author or reader, we better be reading that Holy Bible. And so today is an opportunity to shine the light on Christian authors and to give them an opportunity to share who they are and why they write, to talk about their favorite book of the Bible, and for us to dig deeper into the Bible. So throughout the day today, um, we're here until 8.30 p.m. And throughout the day, we'll have 30-minute segments. And in the 30-minute segments, you either get the opportunity as you're going to do in this segment to actually talk with a Christian author to learn more about his or her book and his or her favorite Bible uh, uh, book, and you'll be able to share as well, or you'll tune in to learn more about a book of the Bible. So in this session today, I'm really, as I mentioned, I'm just really honored to be able to talk about this young lady. <laughs> her name is Carolyn L. Austin, and I love the cover of her book, Prayers of My Mother, and it's volume one, so we know it's some good stuff in there, because it's volume one, which means it's going to be some more, some more, some more, some more. So, Carolyn, I want you to talk a little bit about who you are, what inspired you to write this book, and talk a little bit about that cover as well. Okay. Um, again, my name's Carolyn Austin. I am retired. I retired from federal law enforcement in 2016. I am a mother of one child and I have two grandsons. Um, I was inspired to write this book as we see, Prayers of My Mother. I was inspired. To, this is my mom on the cover. This is actually my oldest brother. My mom was a prayer warrior when I was growing up people actually came to our house for prayer. So I fast forward in 2014, one of my friends was going through a really bad time and she wanted mom to pray with her. And my mom has Alzheimer's now, so she's not able to pray with people like she used to. So I said, I'll do it. So I just started praying with my friend forward again. So now my friend with the one friend led to me having a email that I sent out each night people were responding back about how much the devotionals were helping them. So I was inspired to put them in a book, but I didn't plan on talking about my own mess, my own stuff in this book. And that's what everybody likes about prayers of my mother, that I talk about real life trials and tribulations and challenges that I had that people also have. And I talk about what I did to get through them. So um, that's, you know, pretty much it. That's me. You know, that's the book. And that's the cover. My mom. And that's my oldest brother again. What a beautiful testimony. I love that cover. It, you could tell it's a lot of history right there in it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I want to thank you um, for, for sharing that. Can you talk a little bit about your publishing journey? Mm -hmm. um, well, um, because I was in, I won't say because I was in, but by, while being in law enforcement, I had to write a lot. So I believe that helped me with the foundation of just writing the book in general. So I had to write a lot. And um, I ended up using 
like five of my friends and including my daughter to read my book as I was writing it. And so that pretty much helped me to get it all down on paper. I used Microsoft Word. Um, I ended up learning about different ways to publish and I ended up using a self publisher. And now I've decided to just use Amazon because it was much more efficient because everybody uses Amazon. So it was much more efficient. All I had to do was just upload my cover, upload the um, PDF, and that was it. Where with the other publishers, they charge you all this money, but you know, you pretty much are getting the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then the more people you have doing certain things, the more money you have to give <laughs> to whomever that intermediary is. So I felt with Amazon, it would just be just a, a easy, a easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. So that was my publishing journey. Awesome, awesome. So what's next for you as a writer? Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually working on my second book and I do have volume two, you know, halfway done, but, um, it, I've been inspired to write Don't Eat Your Vomit. Don't Eat Your Vomit was introduced in Prayers with My Mother. And as I traveled with the book, people would tell me that Don't Eat Your Vomit was their favorite um, topic. And Don't Eat Your Vomit is something my mom told me years ago when I was going through my first divorce. And um, I was kind of tearing with you know, the idea of trying to make it work some more after I had worked so hard, you know, before. And she said, you know, you don't eat your vomit. And I was like, what? You know, and I'm like in my 20s at this time. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? And she was like, you don't eat your vomit. And I have come now as I'm older to use it for other situations. It could be job situations. It could be family situations. It's definitely with relationships. So don't eat your vomit. I talk about, and I have begun writing it again. I am going to talk about career vomit. Um, I call it extended family vomit and relationship vomit. And um, again, people just really love that topic. And it's just pretty much, we all do it. We all have situations in our lives that we struggle with and we just can't walk away from it. And so we go back and we think we can continue to make it work and we just keep going back. And I go to the scriptures that um, my mom was talking about, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 20 through 22, and then Proverbs 26, 11, which says it's just straight up. You know, as a dog returns to its vomit, so do fools repeat their folly. And that's pretty much the book, you know, as a whole. I'm talking about different situations. And I have um, decided to use different, you know, like buzzwords, you know, as I write the book where I tell, talk about recognizing your vomit. I talk about purging yourself from your vomit. And since purging ourselves from my vomit is the hardest thing <laughs> for people to do, I also talk about, you know, recognizing your vomit, then preparing yourself to manage your vomit. Because <laughs> since some of us can't walk away from it, you know, we have to learn how to manage it so that we can survive and thrive, you know, from it or through it. And so that's pretty much the concept of don't eat your vomit. Awesome. Now, I know you've give, given so much great information. I know some of our um, viewers probably have questions. So if anyone wants to ask a question, unmute yourself and go for it. <laughs> Well, I do see some people who, I see my cousin I haven't talked to in years, he's on. All right. Um, I, see, I have people on here that attend, I have a deal, I have a, so every Sunday I do a Zoom, a Zoom session each Sunday. Uh -huh. So I have some of my attendees that are joining me today. And thank you everybody for supporting me. I really appreciate it. I have my oldest brother here um, on there. He's supporting me today. Now, is he so, the one um, I thank cover? all of you. Is he the one on the cover? No, he's okay. the next oldest. He's the okay. next oldest. Um, we lost our oldest brother in oh, 2016. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Do we have a, anyone want to ask a question? I wanted to ask and thank you for sharing.
Yes. Um, it sounds like you have a lot of good information, and, and that's so important because I think we do a lot hold on to our vomit. <laughs> so I think, you know, from your topics, it sounds like it's going to barely be educational. Um, so I just wanted to get an idea, like, how long it took you to write it, and I guess, you know, what kept you motivated to keep it going. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll talk about the... Um the path as far as writing prayers of my mother because I just started to write Don't Eat Your Vomit. So prayers of my mother, because I was doing the email devotionals about two years when I decided to start writing um, prayers of my mother. So the, the devotionals were actually the, the, you know, the backbone of it. So because what I did was I yo, used everyone's favorite you know, whatever the favorite devotional was, because they would respond back to me and say things like, oh, Carolyn, that was right on time. This really helped me and all of that. So I used those first. And that was supposed to be the foundation of the book. You know, like I said, I never planned to tell my business in the book. But as I started writing, and um, one day, all the topics, I kid you not, just flooded my, my brain. And I just put them all on a spreadsheet. And then once I had the topic, then, you know, if I didn't already have a devotional for it, I had, somehow I ended up even either writing one at some point or something that happened to me, I was able to use. And so that was pretty much the process. So it took about, it took only like 10 months, 10 and a half months to do it. And I think it's only because I had already been doing the devotionals. And then because so much of it is my personal stories. And then I had, again, five, I had four friends and I had my daughter who, as I was writing them, I could just send it to them and say, hey, everybody, you know, tell me what you think and what have you. And, you know, they would get back to me and it just really helped. And this book, I actually got a five star from Reader's Favorite. And I know it was because I, you know, had my friends, you know, I was able to bounce off ideas on them and they sent back and they were like, hey, Carol, this was great. Why don't you make that a question? I may have a statement. They say, why don't you make it a question? You know, just little things like that. And um, so again, it took only 10, like 10 and a half, 11 months. So that was a, that was a blessing. You know, mm -hmm. however, with Don't Eat Your Vomit, because I'm pretty much writing it from scratch, um, I'm hoping to have it done by June next year. So I'm really working really hard to do that. But it's just, it's definitely going to take a little bit more effort because I don't have, you know, that draft already. Um, because like I said, the prayers, the prayer share i call it prayer share my email devotional is called prayer share so the prayer share again helped me so much with prayers with my mother because i had already you know done the devotionals on those different topics so i have topics in prayer of mother my mother like backstabbing you know um hope faith um you know i talk about dreams in there i have a topic a, a topic called um deja vu which i talk about dreams and I'm a dreamer, and I've always dreamed very vividly. So I'm able to talk about dreams that ended up meaning something in my life. And um, I just tell people about that to help them maybe interpret their own dreams when situations happen. And they're dreaming, and they're not, they're not quite understanding what they're dreaming. So I kind of talk about that, too. And sometimes I even be able to interpret other people's dreams when they call me and tell me about it. So, you know, it's just, um, it's really been a journey. Um, God has really blessed me throughout this journey. Um, even when I'm tired sometimes, when I'm, you know, getting ready to do a devotional at night, a lot of times I just talk about my own stuff that I'm dealing with. And too many times people are like, that really helped me, Carolyn, because they're dealing with that type of thing too. So that's what, um, if nothing else, I've learned that we all go through the same stuff. And sometimes we just have to have the courage to talk about it to let people know you're not alone. You know, you're not the only one that's dealing with that. You know, you're not the only one that's so in love and you just can't walk away. You know, you're not the only one that's having that struggle at work. And, you know, you got that backstabbing friend, that backstabbing coworker. You know, you're not the only one. And um, I think that's what's most important to help other people to deal with their mess and just stuff that they're going through. Thank you. Absolutely. If anyone else has a comment or a question, the floor is yes. Um, this is Francis. Um, <clears throat> Carolyn, I'm so proud of you. Number one, uh, I have read the book, even though we had to get it to a CD, because you have a lot of different avenues where you're promoting your book. So I appreciate that. 
One of the things that I would like to know, how do you go about marketing your book? How do you get it out there? Um, well, this is one of the ways, you know, doing, you know, taking advantage of opportunities that are presented to me. Um, I traveled, the book has been out since 2017, July, and I've been traveling with the book. I've gone to different conferences with the book. And um, that is my, has been my main way of getting it out there. I have often, you know, wanted to be able to be, you know, affiliated with just different Christian type events because it's a Christian book. Um, but however, you know, people who, you know, are not, you know, Christian, but they believe in God and they, they, you know, they, they believe in the Bible and they understand the Bible, you know, they love the book too. So I did not want to be like, you know, in a, you know, pigeonhole to just say, oh, I can only promote the book to Christians. This book has been, you know, a blessing to all kinds of people. And the only reason I can say that is because a lot of the events that I have attended with the book. I'm able to go back to those books and those people, um, excuse me, go back to those conferences or those events. And the people actually come back to me and tell me how much the book has helped them or touched them. And I found that to be very encouraging for me because sometimes when you do something like this, you don't know, you know, if it was something that God wanted you to do until people tell you about how much it helped them with their own spiritual journey or with their own struggle. So for me, it's been a very much a blessing when I have been able to go back to some of these same events and have people come back and tell me about how much the book touched them or helped them in some type of way. So I, um, you know, I wish I had, you know, other ways to um, promote the book more. I always hope Oprah could read my book and so she could tell everybody about it. <laughs> but again, you know, you all have been my biggest supporters and you all have been the ones that have promoted my book the most. Wow, Aaliyah Watkins says she's so excited about the launch of your new book. So she put that in the chat, so I wanted to share that with you. <laughs> Thank you. And listen, we're at 147, our time is going quickly. So I wanna make sure that you give your contact information, your website information, if folks wanna buy your book, if they wanna invite you out as a speaker, how can they do that? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the book is on Amazon, and you can also go to my website, prayersofmymother.com, prayersofmymother.com. There is a contact page on my website, and um, the contact page, it will lead directly to my email address, which is carolyn at carolynlaustin.com. So it's my name. So my email is carolyn at carolynlaustin.com. Um, and um, I think that was all you asked me. You asked me how my contact information, if anybody wants to invite me to an event. Again, you know, prayersofmymother.com. There's a contact page which will lead you directly to my email, carolyn at carolynlaustin.com. And the book is on Amazon, Prayers of My Mother. Awesome. And can you tell us your favorite book of the Bible? Um, that's kind of difficult because I've learned as I'm on this journey, I've learned so many, but the first one that comes to my mind is Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8, ask, seek, and knock, you know, that one, you know, um, asking they may be given to you, seek, and um, knock, and the door will be open, so yes. Yes, yes. Yes. I want to make sure that others have an opportunity. We have a few minutes left. If you have a question or a comment, now is the time to do it. Just remember to unmute yourselves. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Carolyn's sister. My name is Antonicia Jackson, and um, I just wanted to say to her, I'm very proud because I have been there through her journey, and I'm very proud of her being able to share her stories and her successes. And I know that it has helped so many people. There are friends of mine that have read the book that have um, really benefited a lot. So I am very proud of her and just so happy to see her get to this point and continuing to share her journey with so many people. Thank you, sister. 
That is a beautiful thing. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Now, listen, I want to give you all an opportunity to share some comments, but I also want to give you an opportunity to share your favorite book of the Bible. So this is National Book Lovers Day. It's August 9th. We're celebrating all things books, and it's a Sunday, so we're celebrating Christian books. So our feature for this segment is Carolyn L. Austin, and what a treat it's been with her sharing. But I want to hear if you have a favorite Bible book that you want to um, mention, you can now would be the time to do it. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Patricia Ivy. I'm one of Carolyn's oldest friends, along with a few others on the line. And I have been knowing her since I was, I think, 11. And when I tell you that she has always been this type of person, um, she is just outgoing, very strong willed, outgoing. So this makes me just so proud to see and know where she came from and how long she has been on this journey. So I just want to tell her that I love her and I thank her so much for the book, which I have read. Thank you. And I share a lot, I share a lot of it with a lot of people because I'm, I'm into the church. Um, and I share a lot of it with a lot of the people that I go to church with, even people I don't go to church with, I do share a lot of her stories and stuff from her book and her prayers and stuff from her book. I do share a lot of that with people. So, and they tell me how, you know, inspiring it is to them. So again, I am just truly, truly immensely proud of her. And my favorite book of the Bible is Proverbs. All right. I, just, I, I love, I just, I read Proverbs and there's no one particular one. I just, I like them all because of the fact that it, it entails, it tells you what to really look for, what to really, you know, how to do, how to, I, it's just, for me, it's inspiring. So that's my favorite book. Thank you, Trish. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Sharing. We have a few more minutes. So if someone else wants to jump in and share, you're welcome to it. Hi, uh, my name is Naomi Winchester, and I've known Carolyn for at least five or five to six years now um, through another organization um, that she participates with with me. And <clears throat> I just wanted to share that I truly appreciate what she's doing. And there are people that I guess you can talk about and they've never been in the room with you before. And to me, she is one of those people that I just feel like I have to get into other spaces and really make sure like when you see and you know of a good thing, you share it with others. And that's what I've been doing. And I've also shared it with um, other churches that I've visited. And I've also shared the book with in prison ministries. And there's a lot of women in those prison ministries that have written back to me to let me know that that book was one of the books in their chapel that has oh, really inspired them to continue to do better, to get home to their children, to pray for their children, as well as just for themselves and understand like how they can help the next um, person that they're actually, you know, spending time with. And um, I just wanted to let her know, I don't think I got a chance to tell you that, but no. I can send you those letters that I received to, to say thank you for that, that book that you put out there for them. And for, for the world to see. It is definitely helping a lot of people. Thank you so much. Yes. Naomi, what's your favorite book of the Bible? Oh, yes. I'm so, I uh, just want to make sure I shared that, that I, Proverbs as well. I love poetry, but at the same time, um, I just feel like it gets to the point and it's, and it's something that I can pull from memory to make sure like when I'm in situations, I'm like, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you know, this is something that I have to just trust in God with all my heart and, you know, not lean on my own understanding. And I just, you know, it helps me get through a lot of things. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing. Wow, Carolyn, did you imagine when you wrote your book that you would get this, you know, sort of response? No, not at all. Mm -mm. <laughs> what a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing, you know? <laughs> we have a few more minutes. I want to make sure I get everybody's comments in before we close out. We're closing out at 1.58. Anybody else want to share or ask a question? I just want to share this is um, Anthony Sia, Carolyn's sister. Again, that my favorite book of the Bible is Proverbs as well um, because of 
the wisdom that I find throughout the whole book. And also Ephesians is one of my favorites as well. Yeah. Just wanted to share that. I love Ephesians. This is, this is Marcetti's Carolyn's cousin. And just want to let you know that we're just so proud of you in Chicago. And I can't wait to get my copy of the book. And now, now the story of Ruth, with your, your book sounds pretty much like uh, Ruth and Naomi's story with your prayers of your mother. Um, but my favorite book of the Bible is the story of Joseph in Genesis. And I love you. I just can't wait to get my copy of the book. We're just so proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marcetti. <laughs> Aaliyah typed in, Carolyn's book really make you feel as if you know the author personally, if you've never met her. She takes you on her journey from Exodus to her land of milk and honey. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Aaliyah. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, we have um, about three minutes left. So Carolyn, I want you to give your contact information one more time, okay? Okay, all right. Um, you can contact me, Carolyn, at carolynlaustin.com. You can also contact me through my website, prayersofmymother.com. And there's a contact page there where you'll be able to actually send me an email. Also, the book, Prayers of My Mother, is available on Amazon. Um, and I think that's it. And again, this is my book, Prayers of My Mother. That's my mom on the cover and my oldest brother. And this picture is actually 1945 is when it was taken. And when I decided to write this book, this is what the picture that came to my mind that would be perfect for the cover. Because again, it was my mother that inspired me to even begin this journey. And um, I realize now that if God has something for you to do, it's going to find you. And by my friend, and she's on the line, the first, my first prayer share recipient is on here. I don't know if she wants to talk, but because of her, it just catapulted me into this direction. And I realize now that that's what God had for me all along. And, you know, that old saying, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Carolyn. And if you could leave us with one nugget of wisdom, what would that be? Mm. Um, just pray because mm. God does hear us and he does answer prayers. It may not happen when you want it to, but he's always on time as the old folks say. And a lot of times, you know, you're praying and praying and it's just not happening. You just have to be patient. Um, and that's another topic in my book. I talk, I'll talk about waiting. We have to learn to wait patiently. We have to learn to wait on God. 